That's a crown of thorns starfish. And it's big, bold, beautiful, and brilliant. In a word, it's gaudy. We saw an abundance of gaudy creatures on our trip to the reefs of the National Park of American Samoa. But I think I was most impressed by a little unassuming creature that I saw before I even donned my snorkel mask. More on that later. After a night on the main island, Tutuila, my dad and brother and I took a puddle jumper to the smaller island of Ofu, with only a couple hundred people and exactly three tourists. Our excellent host, Ben, at the Vauto Lodge, met us at the airstrip, where we literally walked about 30 feet to the lodge. On Ofu, the national park predominantly comprises the coral reef, from just east of the lodge to the spires at the eastern tip of the island. A bridge here connects to the neighboring island of Olasenga. I had a botany professor in college who was not very excited when it came to the big showy flowers. In fact, he called them gaudy. I don't like those gaudy flowers. And I can kind of understand that. He had spent decades studying plants. And the flowers that really excited him are the tiny, obscure, rare flowers and beyond that, the ones that had an interesting story to tell. We had seven days to explore the shallows around Ofu and Olasenga. And since it was my first time snorkeling in the South Pacific, I was eager to see some new species of my favorite gaudy creatures. But I was also hoping to see some more unusual characters, and I just wanted to get a better feel for the workings of this ancient and imperiled ecosystem. After a couple of nights at the lodge, we were joined by a group of reef scientists from Old Dominion University. And I posed the question to them, you know, what, what kind of creatures are you interested in seeing out in the coral reefs? Uh, one of them was excited about sea urchins because of their role in keeping the reefs healthy. And I think really that's kind of what what is most exciting to a lot of these scientists because what they're working on is studying the resilience of these reefs to climate change. So while they might still be interested in the, the bright, beautiful, gaudy creatures of the reef, I think they're more interested in the system as a whole, the ecosystem. So what they're doing is studying the heat tolerance of specific corals and this knowledge is being applied in restoration efforts around the world. I'll put a link to their research in the description. After exploring those earlier snorkel spots outside the National Park, our buddy Nugget accompanied Eyes and Me down the road for our first foray into the actual park's reef. And it was spectacular. You can see how shallow the water is here, and it's my understanding that this warmer lagoon has led to coral that is both genetically and adaptively more resilient to warmer temps, hence the scientific interest in this reef. See the video linked in the description for more details. After tooling around in the park reef for a few days, I started to become more familiar with certain types of fish and corals, many of which I had never seen previously. And not knowing squat about coral taxonomy, I came up with my own names for some of them. These guys are called French toast sticks. And here's a taco bowl. 
a different kind of taco bowl, an elaborate taco bowl, taro chips, I guess snorkeling makes you hungry. These are turkey feathers. I still love the usual gaudy suspects. But it's these unusual and sometimes otherworldly corals that get me really excited. And if you see any familiar characters, feel free to list them in the comments with a timestamp. I'm just a lowly tourist, but the more time I spend diving or snorkeling in coral reefs, the more I appreciate the complexity of this ecosystem. I love the garden-like conglomerations of corals, seaweed, algae, sea pearls, and sponges, and who knows what else. The Dr. Seussian habitats underneath the corals, and the similarities to lichen. The symbioses, both parasitic and mutualistic. The idea that the reef is like a superorganism with hundreds of thousands of species performing trillions of interactions and processes. And the fact that too many disruptions to these processes can spell doom for the whole system. For now though, the reef off of Ofu seems healthy. There are sections with huge parietes corals I got so excited when I saw this massive colony that I tried to estimate the circumference. Close to 200 feet, which is more than Big Mama, the largest Parietes colony in the world. Of course, at 20 feet high, Big Mama is still a much larger colony. I was hoping to see the brightly colored Christmas tree worms, and in fact, my camera caught a few before I even saw them, as you can see earlier in the video. Unfortunately, this is where my new GoPro camera failed me. I wish I could present the intricate brilliance of these little tube worms, but the GoPro doesn't do great close-ups. I was also hoping to see a colorful nudibranch, but it wasn't until I edited the footage that I realized I'd missed this out-of-focus beauty. Okay, prepare yourself for those gaudy fish. These little electric blue damselfish were everywhere. There was a variety of tangs. Goatfish. And these sea breams whose tail spot seemed to glow. I saw a few of the bizarre looking filefish. Numerous wrasses and their cousins, the coral crunching parrotfish, the cartoonish Moorish idol, and the stars of the show, angelfish and 
butterfly fish, exploding with color like Jimi Hendrix, playing the star-spangled banner. Puffers have a special place in my heart. And I'd never seen this yellow phase puffer before. You gotta keep your eyes peeled for squirrel fish, groupers, mullet, trevally, and somebody please tell me who this guy is. I love the elegant flute mouth, or cornet fish, and while I was chasing this guy, I came upon this guy. Some of my favorite critters are the elusive LBJs, or little brown jobbies. This is a lizard fish, I think, a juvenile dusky wrasse, and a blenny, I think peeking at me from her little cave. I didn't see this blurry LBJ until I was editing. I think it's a fish, but it kind of moves like a shrimp. You tell me. And look, I just found a second one. Relatives of sea stars, sea cucumbers were ubiquitous in the shallows. I'm not sure I'd seen these bowl-sized giant clams before, but I was impressed by their array of psychedelic colors. Lost in the swirling melodrama of the reef, I'd forgotten about eyes. He was nowhere to be found, and I was growing a little concerned that he'd been swept out to sea by the nearby riptide. But then I saw him, and he beckoned me over. He had found that devourer of corals, the crown of thorns starfish. A native of these reefs, it is highly destructive nonetheless, so we were glad that this was the only one we saw on the trip. Eyes mentioned that he had also seen some blue sea stars, creatively named blue sea stars, in the area. So I left him to his own devices and went to investigate. In a somewhat barren area just inside the crashing waves, I found one. And as often happens when you're first drawn to a gaudy creature, you spot something otherwise hidden nearby. What was this alien being? A partially buried octopus? Or maybe just an inert rope? But no, it was moving. I examined it for a few minutes, but couldn't find any discernible end to the appendage. I was about to move on when I found its terrifying head, straight out of a sci-fi movie. But who am I to judge this guy? For all I know, he was looking back at me, wondering what the hell this strange, bloated, hairy white ape was doing in the water so far from its native land. Maybe I'm the gaudy one. Turns out this is the largest sea cucumber in the world, a snake cucumber, and this particular one was about 10 feet long. I ended up seeing a couple more of these alien beasts in the reefs of the national park.
holy crap, this is scary. All of a sudden, this is scary. <laughs> All right, here we go. First day on Ofu, Eyes and I walked along the shore and below the spires we beheld what turned out to be the most awe-inspiring creature I saw on the whole trip. And that was these little fish that were plastered all over the rocks and when the waves would come in they would kind of skip through the water and the roiling waves to another rock. But they spend a fair amount of their time out of the water. So they're kind of like these primeval fish, uh, hearkening back to the days when the first fish gained a foothold on land. You can think about the resilience of those little fish to be able to withstand the pounding waves and living on land and the heat and, and everything that they have to deal with. Fittingly, we discovered later that these little guys are called rock skippers. You don't want to step too far back, do you? <laughs> 